We really appreciate all the comments we get on social media from our viewers. And every once in a while, I like to, to answer one. And this one is from Arlen Hawks 381 Please would someone tell me where all that electricity is going to come from? We live in a small BC, British Columbia, city and surrounding area, population around 60,000. There are eight charging stations. Also, we don't have the power for charging 50% of the population, let alone 100%. So ice minus 30 C. Uh, apparently Arlen lives in a probably in the northern part of British Columbia. It gets pretty cold. Uh, I kind of grew up in the prairies where minus 30, minus 40 was not unusual. It's nasty. Hard on vehicles. So I get it. Good question. And I, I want to uh, explain because it's not like elect utilities and regulators uh, have been caught unawares. They've seen the electrification trend coming for quite a while. How quickly they responded to it often depends on the state of their grid. So if you look down at the United States, where they really under uh, underinvested in their grid over the last 30, 40, 50 years, and now their uh, demand, which had peaked, not peaked, flattened after 2008, as did Canada's, because of the big financial crisis. And then we lost a lot of industrial plant. In British Columbia, for example, it was pulp mills and sawmills, which are a big load on on the system. So anyway, the uh, uh, what? it's a good question. And I want to start with BC Hydro because we did a webinar on this last year and they released, uh, BC Hydro released its integrated resource plan and a 10-year capital plan. So where are we going? What do we expect for growth? And how are we going to spend money on transmission or distribution generation and so on to, to meet that demand? And what they, what they estimate is that we're going to see about, oh, 2% growth a year. And they're going to, uh, they need more generation. Uh, I think they've got 30, 32 hydro dams, uh, which is why one of the reasons why BC is like 98% uh, emission-free electricity. So they're, they're going to refurbish some of those dams so they have higher capacity. Good idea. Uh, but they're also going to go revisit an idea that got the, it was a very big political uh, kerfuffle back in, 2017, because the previous government had uh, brought on, said, issued uh, power purchase agreements for wind and solar and run of river. And because the cost at that time, you know, say 2009 to 2017, the cost for those technologies was much higher than it is today. I mean, today, you know, solar with batteries is cheaper than natural gas in some markets. And uh, and so there was, a, it was the fact that the province overpaid for electricity from those sources uh, politicized it. But they're going back now because the technologies are so much better and so much cheaper. And so already BC Hydro has issued requests for proposals and chosen uh, uh, independent power producers who will erect solar uh, farms or wind farms, mostly, mostly those two, and they'll buy them on 20, 25 year uh, agreements. Uh, so in, in British Columbia, uh, that's how the, the BC Hydro and the government and the, the regulator are, are handling it. They're expecting fairly, uh, that's vigorous growth. I mean, back in the heyday, it was 2% a year. The Americans, three three and a half, four percent 4%, a lot of it is data center related. A lot of it is heat related because they have, you know, they have the southern part of the, the country that's very, very hot and air conditioning, uh, you know, is a, is a big load. So they're expecting enormous growth and having a really hard time keeping up. I sit on the U.S. Uh, Energy Association uh, journalism panel quite often for their monthly technical briefings, and and it's always almost always utility executives. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard executives say, look, we're retiring coal too fast, we're retiring gas too fast, we can't get wind and solar and batteries into the system and connected fast enough, and we're worried. And the so the uh, Arlen's is you know that's not a bad a bad question. Um, and there's you know some concern that uh, the grid is being pushed to the limit. Uh, right now they're in a heat wave, and I saw a headline today that said the grid has been pushed right to the edge because of that demand. But here's here's the thing. Uh, it's not like these utilities didn't see it coming. They've been planning for a while. In Canada, the load growth hasn't been as high. We already had a, a reasonable grid. And yeah, it was getting a little old and, and needed some investment. But, you know, it's like 84% clean already. And um, 
So we started from a good base, low cost, reliable, and so on. We haven't felt the pressure to add. But now, as electric, uh, electric vehicles are adopted and, and transportation in general is going to be electrified quicker than we thought because of break, battery breakthroughs in China. Uh, so I wanted to leave you, uh, Arlen's, with three things to watch for. First one is distributed resources by homeowners and businesses. Now, uh, it, you, a lot of the attention uh, on DER uh, has you know, been around uh, homeowners. So you put some solar panels on your, on your roof and you've got a battery in the, in the uh, garage and maybe you know, at some point you're gonna have your electric vehicle and it'll be a storage device that the utility can call on when, it, when it's needed. You have an electric house, uh, that sort of thing. But my money, is on the, the most uh, impactful development taking place around large businesses, commercial businesses, and industry. Because what you're seeing is that those are businesses that, you know, they're very sensitive to interruptions in power, sensitive to changes in price. And so uh, we had a, a young entrepreneur uh, on here uh, about a month or two ago. And he's from Costa Rica, went to the U.S., got educated. Now he's going back to Costa, Costa Rica as an engineer. And what he does is he goes to Costa Rican uh, manufacturing plants, could be in, like an ice cream plant, could be some kind of food plant, doesn't matter. And he says, uh, our grid is not very reliable. You're getting outages all the time. It costs you a lot of money. I will bring the solar panels, I'll bring the batteries, I'll bring the digital controls. And what I will do is integrate them all into a package for you and, and not only save you money, but now you're not going to have any downtime, so you're not going to be losing money because of outages. And he said it's being very well received. And I've talked to other entrepreneurs who have that kind of business model or something like it uh, all, you know, all over the U.S. and, and a couple in Canada. So watch for the the import uh, the uh, rising importance of distributed ener energy resources, particularly around solar. Uh, the second thing is the role of nuclear. Uh, this is you know Ontario just uh, Ontario Power Generation just announced the that they've given the go ahead to the world's first small modular reactor in Ontario, and we'll. I've been sitting on the fence about this I'm, because the technology, the SMR technology is still unproven. Uh, we've had some projects like New Scale in the U.S. go toes up because it just wasn't feasible. Uh, they couldn't get their costs down low enough. And I, you know, it's kind of, I took kind of a show me attitude. I did the same thing with hydrogen and it turned out that hydrogen was not what it had been hyped up. and It'll play a much a smaller role in the, uh, in the energy transition. And I, suspected that maybe that would be the case for nuclear. So we'll see what happens in Ontario. We're watching that very closely, but China's building a bunch of it. Uh, Russia's apparently embarked on some more and uh, nuclear seems like it's uh, got a bit of a renaissance here. Uh, so we'll kind of, we'll see how that goes. The third piece of this is uh, Prime Minister Mark Carney's plan to build a national grid, or at the very least to link up the provincial grids east and west so we can trade more electricity east, east and west. And the reason for that is we have a lot of hydro, you know, BC, uh, Manitoba, uh, some in, uh, in Ontario, uh, Quebec, huge, Labrador, uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. So uh, they pair very well with renewables, with wind and solar, the intermittent resources. And the and of course, once when you can trade electricity, so let's say for solar, you know, as the uh, as the sun starts to set in you know other parts of the country, you can begin. They can draw on their neighbors who are still generating power through wind, solar, and other and other sources. And it's a way to stabilize the grid, bring down costs, and and get things done much much quicker and more flexible, more more resilient. So distributed energy resources, the role of nuclear and the east-west trade national power grid in, in Canada, uh, I think are gonna be three big stories that we'll be watching over the next five or, or 10 years. And they will, Arlen's, they will address your question about where the electricity is going to come from.